Um, I wonder what to, to bring. And first, this is my birthday today. And uh, I thought, oh, look at our birthday celebration from the Bible. And I discovered there are only two Bible celebrations recorded in the Bible, one in the Old Testament, one in the New Testament, and they both ended in disaster. <laughs> so there's no talk on birthday celebrations. So I've changed my, my thoughts on my message today because, you know, so many people, even the fishman on, on Friday says, our summer's past. We've had no summer. And uh, so we're going to have a wee thought from Jeremiah, the old prophet Jeremiah. And I think he was a young prophet, but he spent his time weeping for his people. He says, oh, that my head were washed and my tears would flow. And sometimes we feel that for cow and beef. We've taken the gospel message to the folks in cow and beef all our life. And there are so few have ever responded. And we're like Jeremiah. So Jeremiah says in chapter 8, The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why will then, uh, why then is not the health of my, the daughter of my people recovered? So Jeremiah's thinking of the terrible days in which he lived and the people didn't respond either. And then my thoughts went to the New Testament and to the Lord Jesus himself. And he was going up to the temple at Jerusalem and he looked at that beautiful structure and he said, weepingly, it says Jesus wept and weepingly he says, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often would I have gathered you as a hen gathers her chickens under her wing? but you would not. So they didn't even respond to the Lord Jesus, the best of preachers. And he, he, he wept for Jerusalem. So today we're just thinking around some of these things. And it's nice that you've come. The harvest is past. This is the third of three sessions, isn't it? We've had three Sunday afternoons of little teas like this. And this is the final one before the winter comes. And we've gone up and down to the different parts of the town or area and the harvests are all in. In fact, they're starting to plough for the winter. And uh, here we are. And we can say the harvest is past. The summer is ended. But I wonder how we're going to respond are we going to say, we are not saved either? We haven't listened to the message. We've turned away from it. And that would be my, my prayer today for you, is that you would not turn away from it. This is a, a time of opportunity. That's what Jeremiah was saying. That's his message. His message is not doom and gloom. In some ways it is, really. But it's got in there, woven in it, opportunity. You know, one of the Greek gods, um, he was a strange looking figure, as very often these Greek gods were. And he had a bald head all the way from the back to the front, but he had a, a forelock that grew out the front. It's almost like a modern young man, isn't it? And he had a forelock that grew out the front. And somebody said, why are you bald all over? And a forelock at the front. And he says, well, my name is Opportunity. And I can slip away so easily over the bald bit until you want to hold on to the forelock so that you don't miss it. Opportunity, it comes and so quickly it passes by. 
I wonder how often we here this afternoon have had opportunity after opportunity to hear the message of the gospel and we've never responded to it. Oh, that like Jeremiah, we would ask you to respond to the claims of the gospel. Like the Lord Jesus Christ, he himself wanted the people of, of at Jerusalem to respond to his claims. And why was he able to do that? Because he was different from all others, isn't it? That's the message of the gospel. It's bound up in a person. It's not bound up in a church. It's not bound up in any, you know, sometimes I feel very sad for these people that stand in, in uh, Morrison's Corner day by day, week by week with their literature. And what are they doing it for? To clock up the hours. But, and it's, it's belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the, that's the whole matter. Have I come to faith and trust in him? He's the one who is different from all others and all other things. Their trust is not in anything such. It's certainly not in Union Hall. It's certainly not in anybody that comes to Union Hall. It's only in the message that the Lord Jesus gives to us. A message of trust and faith and hope. For he is the one who went all the way from heaven's glory down to this earth to live amongst us as a, as a man different from all other men, mind you, a perfect, holy. And yet he knew all about manhood. He was a man in every true sense of the word. And yet he was God, manifested in flesh. And why did he come? Why did he come on that long journey? He came to do for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. He gave himself a ransom upon a cross at Calvary. The parable is that the the man who lend, who lended out his vineyard in the New Testament, and when it was time for the fruit, he sent one servant and another, and one they stoned and cast out, and one they beat and they left him all bruised and torn, and then. The, the master of the vineyard says, I've got one son, I'll send him. Maybe they'll reverence him and give him honour. But what did they do? They said, here is the heir, come let us kill him. And they killed the Lord Jesus and cast him out and took him outside the city's gate to a cross at Calvary and said, we don't want him. I wonder what our response will be. Will we be different? Will we accept him as our own and personal saviour? He is the way and the only way. And we just ask that you would give thought to that. And we would just say, the harvest is passing. And we are not saved. Well, you can always change that. You can always take that step of faith and trust and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. For that is the only way, is to trust in the one who can save us. And today he stands with outstretched arms to welcome us, to embrace us to himself. And it's only a step to Jesus. Why not take it now? And we just come in simple, trusting faith. That's my short message for you. It's a message just to ponder and to think about an opportunity again. And to just put out your, your hand of faith and grasp hold of it. 
and say, Jesus, I will trust you. Trust you with my soul, guilty, lost and helpless. You can make me whole.